purpose of my visit was uh, to uh, to set in motion arrangements for the establishment of the Constitution Commission to uh, find premises uh, to uh, uh, start a list of uh, staff that we would need to appoint to assist the Commission and uh, to uh, uh, look at possibilities of consultation, um, methodology, and, and finally to uh, find the resources uh, for the work of the Commission. And uh, I can tell you very briefly that uh, we have been offered uh, the use of uh, uh, this wing of Parliament, so the room you are in will, will be used by the Commission and the offices along <coughs> this corridor and the corridor downstairs will also be made available to us. Uh, so I hope to see you here very often during, during the work. Um, uh, we should soon be advertising for uh, the core staff of the Commission and uh, hope to make appointments uh, uh, by, by beginning of June. Uh, and uh, I'm also glad to say that uh, our discussions with uh, uh, the UNDP and certain embassies about support they can provide to the process have been very fruitful, very constructive, and we have been assured of uh, the support uh, uh, of these institutions and uh, considerable enthusiasm about the process. Uh, so we are glad to, to start with that support. Uh, I won't go into the details of, uh, of these um, um, arrangements. Uh, they are still to be finalized. But we are confident that um, sometime uh, by middle of next uh, month, uh, we will have the beginnings of, uh, of our administration. Uh, we've also uh, spent a bit of time discussing uh, a question that people have asked me often as to how we would, as a commission, receive the views of uh, the public. What will be the consultative process? Uh, uh, without going into much detail, I could say that we will be happy to <coughs> receive views from anyone who wants to, to uh, give us their views about the new constitution. Uh, we would uh, uh, be traveling through the country and uh, people will be uh, able to, to reach us uh, through mechanism we shall establish. Uh, we want to give every uh, Fijian an opportunity to, to, to meet us, to give us their views about the process their own recommendations, <clears throat> and uh, we hope that uh, uh, we will also receive uh, a lot of uh, written submissions, uh, especially from organized groups, from lawyers, and from uh, other professions, from political parties, from civil society, uh, and we will be happy to meet with them on the basis of their submission to have uh, some discussion. And we have also given uh, considerable thought to how we would analyze the views that uh, uh, will be given to us. Uh, and uh, we believe that if people have taken the trouble to come and meet us and to give us their views, we owe it to them to give very serious consideration to their recommendations. And we uh, intend to uh, set up a, a unit within the commission with the responsibility for the analysis of the views that we receive. And they will be, uh, uh, will provide guidance to us as we draft the constitution. We also, of course, have um, uh, certain principles that uh, underlie the whole process and the outcome which were outlined by the Prime Minister in the speech when he 
uh, inaugurated this process. And, uh, <clears throat> and these principles are fairly universal these days, and uh, so we will be guided by them as well. Uh, uh, so our task falls in two main categories. One is the process of consultation and the analysis of the views that we receive, and secondly, the preparation of the draft constitution. And we have approximately uh, six months, uh, three months for each item. We are, of course, free to allocate our time as we consider most useful. Uh, but we hope that uh, this will allow anyone who wants to talk to us to, 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 to be able to do so. Uh, our uh, draft itself uh, will be, we hope, submitted to some public scrutiny, uh, and then uh, it will be handed over to the Constituent Assembly, which has the task of actual decision making. Our task is really making recommendations, and the Constituent Assembly will be the body which uh, actually makes the decisions. Uh, the, um, the Constituent Assembly won't uh, start with a clean slate, as it were. They will have to start their deliberations with the draft that we produce, but of course they will be free to change it, and, and, and the ultimate responsibility will be theirs. Uh, uh, now, I um, uh, want to make one or two points, and then if you have any questions, if, if the doctor here would like to say something uh, before we have questions. Uh, I want to say that uh, uh, constitution making is uh, always a very important, interesting uh, period in a country's history. In, in recent years, a number of countries have uh, reviewed and changed their constitutions. Currently, something like 15 countries are actually engaged in the process of uh, writing their constitution. Uh, for change of circumstances, a number of different reasons why uh, different countries are currently engaged in, uh, in, in reviewing or making new constitutions. Uh, the context of Fiji you are, you are familiar with, so I won't go through that. I just want to say that uh, the, the process by which a constitution is made is, is extremely important. Uh, uh, in keeping with democratic traditions and fundamentally in keeping with the notion, which is now acknowledged everywhere, that sovereignty of a country lies with its people uh, the process that is adopted here uh, is based on very wide participation of the people. So this is a manifestation of their sovereignty uh, and, um, uh, and manifested in their um, participation. And uh, I can assure you that we will take very seriously any submissions made to us. Uh, these submissions... Uh, <coughs> Uh, could be based, perhaps, in many cases, on the debates that um, uh, have commenced already as part of civic education, as part of reflection by the people as to the, the future of the country, their vision for, uh, for the country, and the future for the children. Uh, and uh, uh, the, so we are hoping that uh, over the next few months uh, with civic education. There will be lots of discussions about the future of the country, about the uh, Constitution as a fundamental law and principles of, of the country. Uh, and we hope that you will all facilitate uh, the participation of people through your various uh, media uh, 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 forums, uh, radio and TV and newspaper, print, uh, and I, what I hope to do <coughs> after uh, this somewhat formal press conference is that if you could stay for a, a, a few minutes, I'd like to discuss with you uh, what your plans are 
uh, to promote uh, discussion of uh, uh, options for the Constitution, uh, giving uh, voice, uh, uh, space to people who are uh, involved in debates, so that through the media, many more people can become involved than, uh, than if they were just confined to their own localities. Uh, we really need a national debate to proceed the work of the commission. Uh, so we start from a, a foundation of, of, of knowledge, of ideas, of, of, uh, and eventually perhaps building some kind of consensus. Uh, uh, the process, of course, in our case, in the commission, uh, we, we will make every effort to, to uh, facilitate uh, uh, distribution of materials. Uh, we hope that by the time we begin our work, the people will have already had time to reflect on changes that they would like to see. Uh, but uh, we would also ourselves uh, assist by distributing some materials when it seems that there is a particular area where there's a lot of interest or an area where th there's uh, different points of view. And, uh, and we also hope that uh, during the process, both uh, in civic education uh, commission and the constituent assembly, that uh, we, that people will also work towards a consensus. Uh, uh, constitution is the fundamental document of a country, and it is important that it should reflect as wide a consensus as possible. And so I think all of us who are involved in the process in our different capacities have an obligation to search for consensus and not insist on our own positions. Uh, so consensus building is a very important uh, part of, uh, uh, of a process like this. Uh, it's not just a document that comes out at the end, but it is uh, the whole process through which the document has come. Uh, which has given opportunities to people to debate and eventually, hopefully, uh, establishing a consensus to which the nation commits itself uh, as, a, <clears throat> as a whole. I'm not going to give you a lecture on, on, um, on constitutions, uh, even though my background as professor might suggest that, uh, that, uh, that I would give a lecture. Uh, I want to say maybe one point uh, which I think has marked uh, the processes or the objectives in a number of countries uh, with new constitutions. Uh, and I think the two challenges are nation building, uh, developing a common identity, and you are not in any way unique in the diversity of your people. You have a wonderful diversity, and uh, visitors who come here often comment on the wonderful diversity of the people of, uh, of Fiji. But many other countries also have um, diversity and, and, and need to find frameworks, social, political, economic, legal, uh, within which these communities can live together constructively, harmoniously, uh, without giving up their their own culture, and so the the task would be to to promote a feeling among the people of Fiji that they all belong to one big community of Fijians. They have many shared moments in the history, but they certainly have a common uh, uh, future destiny, and that is best uh, achieved by cooperation, uh, by friendship, by mixing. Uh, and, and this is a problem faced by many countries. And uh, uh, the way you define citizenship, rights of citizenship, and uh, where you provide for justice, because no community can feel part of the wider nation unless they feel uh, that they are accepted, that they have equal opportunities. And so social justice is the foundation of uh, national unity. And I'm sure in different ways we shall pursue 
how to achieve that objective of uh, social justice. The second major uh, issue in constitution making these days is the restructuring of the state, uh, humanizing the state, making the state more transparent, more inclusive, so no group feels left out, mechanisms of accountability, uh, participation of people throughout uh, the lifetime of a parliament or a government, not something that <coughs> once in four or five years you go to the polls, and, but that your involvement remains continuous in public affairs. Uh, so these are the two kind of principal objectives, I would say, uh, that uh, <clears throat> would, uh, would be a challenge for, 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 for Fiji, uh, and many other provisions will be determined by the objective of national unity and the objective of a accountable, fair state. Uh, and we'll have ample opportunities to debate these issues and discuss these issues, but I just wanted to leave with you the thought that uh, the, the two very important challenges facing uh, Fiji as many other countries is developing a sense of national identity as Fijians, uh, but without rubbing out your diversity of cultures and traditions and languages and religions. And the second one is to restructure the state in ways that it becomes more effective, uh, more accountable, uh, where everybody feels they have a stake in, the, in, 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 that, uh, in that set of institutions we call the state. Uh, so I want to say finally again that, uh, that, uh, that the process through which the Constitution is achieved is going to be very fundamental, not only to the outcome of the Constitution, but the future of this country. And uh, so I hope that you will promote uh, through your work um, participation of people. I hope you will give some coverage to us uh, as a commission, and uh, and we look forward to. I look forward to the commission. Looks forward to working with the media. It, media always plays a very important role in such processes, and people can understand, can find out what's going on in quite remote parts of the country through the efforts of the media so that you have a sense of a national process, nationwide process, even though we are just sitting, for example, now in Suva, but that it is beginning of a, of a very uh, broad uh, process with great implications for the country. Now I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to ask my colleague if uh, he would like to. Yeah. Well, so if you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask them. And then afterwards, we will have informally a few minutes uh, discussion as to how the commission can help you and how you can help us as the process begins. Yes. Well, I mean, on, on generally, I mean, the, the intention very much is uh, of the Commission and of the government and of the people of Fiji that the process should be transparent and should be consultative. Uh, I will, at a later occasion, uh, when we start our, our work properly, indicate the ways in which people will be able to access our records, uh, people can look at our accounts, uh, our procurement procedures. Uh, people can also look at uh, the documentation that uh, uh, we will be using, uh, mostly views that people give us. Uh, so other ways in which you um, may have suggestions yourself as to how we can uh, become open, accountable to the people. Uh, on the specific question of uh, the analysis of the submissions, uh, 
we still have to discuss, but um, uh, I had a meeting with my colleague here and uh, Ms. Mrs. Moore. Other commissioners have not been in town. And we have discussed uh, how we might uh, be, uh, how we might analyze uh, these uh, submissions. Uh, of course, it would depend on how many submissions we receive, and I hope lots of submissions. Uh, uh, and one way to uh, analyze uh, these views uh, would be through um, a series of questions. Uh, of course, we don't want to restrict people in the submissions they make us or the issues they want to raise, uh, but uh, flowing from the fundamental or guiding principles uh, that were outlined by the Prime Minister, by some other universal uh, 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 principles, uh, uh, and by the context of Fiji, uh, we hope to develop a series of questions on which we would seek the opinion of the public. And we'll publish a questionnaire with the brief introduction of the issues. Uh, some of that, I think, is, will be done as part of civic education, but our process is different. And, uh, but we don't want to restrict uh, uh, answers to the questions we raise, and people will be quite free to write uh, their own memorandum uh, touching issues we raise, but raising other issues. And when we have, when we receive these, uh, uh, these uh, submissions, um, we will have by that time developed uh, a, a, a computer pr program software, uh, maybe based on 20 most important questions. And we will start uh, putting in a database the, the, the recommendation that we receive. So we'll need to go through the submissions, whether they are oral or they are written. Uh, and uh, so that when, then when we look for, for the uh, analysis, uh, we can, through this program, be able to say what percentage of people supported what particular position, parliamentary system or, exec or presidential system, and a whole range of issues. Uh, and uh, and uh, and we will we will make uh, available to the public uh, these findings uh, of ours, uh, and uh, and we shall be constantly referring to them as we start uh, drafting the constitution. So that's in in brief uh, what we would propose to do. We term this uh, uh, mix, Mr. Fixit Man as far as constitutions are concerned. And Fiji's had the uh, first constitution 1970, then 1990, and 1997. Uh, from your personal point of view, and since you've taken over as uh, chairman of the commission, what we need to get right this time to ensure that we don't have another abrogation in years to come? Well, first of all, I'm not Miss Fixit. <laughs> My, uh, when I'm not working in my own country, uh, my role is to facilitate uh, national dialogue, uh, to uh, encourage people to discuss their differences and, uh, and uh, try to resolve them, uh, and, 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 but also using my uh, background as a, as a constitutional lawyer to suggest possibilities of dealing with these issues, uh, making uh, 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 available knowledge of other countries. Each country is, of course, unique and it has its own context, and one must never wander away from that context. But uh, many countries have had similar problems, histories, so that one can learn from other countries. And, uh, and so one of the contributions I can make is uh, to draw to the attention of uh, the commission and the, uh, the public generally uh, how some problems that you face have been addressed in, in other countries. Uh, uh, we have just finished a long process in my own country, Kenya, 
and uh, we have many problems that you have, diversity of people, we use the word tribalism, which we think is a negative factor, but we are very proud of the culture of all our tribes, um, including the Indian tribe, to which I belong. Uh, and so I think we can learn from other countries' experiences, and, uh, um, and my uh, uh, role would be not to impose any views of my own, but to listen, uh, along with fellow commissioners, deliberate then on what people have said, uh, constantly encourage people to to have a dialogue, dialogue among themselves. Um, and, uh, and if people are reasonable and sensible, as Fijians are, I'm sure, I think we should move towards a, a constitution which uh, reflects the concerns of the people, which uh, establishes as, and fulfills their destiny, uh, which provides for um, adequate redress of uh, um, grievances, complaints, uh, and uh, it just ensures distribution of resources and uh, hopefully that will work. I mean, when can, one can't guarantee the longevity of a constitution, it's uh, it's for the people to safeguard the Constitution. If a Constitution has been made through what we hope will here be a highly participatory process with respect for all different points of view, uh, and then a consensus. Uh, and if people have become involved, they will have a stake in, uh, in its, uh, its, uh, its, in its protection. If constitutions are imposed, then obviously people don't have the same commitment. Uh, so these are some of my thoughts. That the, that, that's why I have mentioned several times the importance of the process. Uh, I think uh, that nobody gets what all they want out of a constitution, but everybody should get something at least. Uh, and uh, then I think uh, it's important also to ensure that uh, <clears throat> People are not separated from the from the state, state institutions, and it is not every five years that people suddenly exercise the right. They should be constantly involved in public affairs, and uh, take responsibility for the safeguarding of the constitution. With the government, a uh, number of uh, groups have mentioned those points to me. Uh, Unfortunately, I have to say, I have not had time to read all the decrees that are, uh, been, have been uh, brought to my attention, but I hope to do that uh, 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 very soon. I've got copies now. And uh, um, let me first make the point that it is, which I have been really making <laughs> the last uh, 40, 30, 40 minutes, the importance of a, a process which is transparent and, uh, and participatory. Uh, and, and participation, of course, depends on the rights of people to, to meet, uh, to uh, discuss among themselves uh, what, what kind of Fiji they want and how to structure it, and then to have uh, opportunities to convey those ideas to people who are charged with responsibility for the making of the Constitution. Now, whether the laws of Fiji uh, uh, prevent that happening is something I can't say that I can give a definitive answer. Uh, I, I have been told by some people, some groups, that uh, they don't feel uh, uh, how shall I put it? They don't feel brave enough to give their views because they think there may be reprisals if these views are not acceptable to the to the um, authorities that be. Um, that uh, there are some restrictions on their getting together without a permit from the authorities, uh, and there may be others too. Uh, I have been assured by the prime minister. Uh, and the Attorney General, who is with us today, that uh, 
that, that they are completely committed to uh, a transparent and participatory process. And I have to say that in my own preliminary work so far, no obstacle whatsoever has been put in my path. Uh, whatever I have thought is best for the process, and particularly the part of the process where I will be involved is concerned, I have been given um, a, a relatively free hand. And from now onwards, any decisions we make will be made together with the commissioners. I have until now to to sort of act on my own, but now we will soon have the commission, and uh, and we will make commission decisions of the commission, uh, organize a program of uh, consultation, uh, and then uh, the drafting. And in, in none of these areas do I expect any intervention by the government. I think that is well understood. Uh, now, whether in, in, in the context of people reaching us, there are obstacles, uh, uh, I, I cannot speak with any, any real knowledge. I've heard uh, some complaints from some groups, and I haven't really been, I haven't started talking to people yet. So just people who, who have asked to, see me or send me a note, uh, and, uh, and I have raised those uh, complaints, brought to the attention of the Prime Minister, and he has assured me that any activity connected with the, uh, with the uh, making of the Constitution would be, uh, can take place, there are no restrictions, and um, and once we start our process, uh, uh, and if there are instances where anybody feels there has been some obstruction, well, we will certainly want to hear from them, and then we can raise with the, with the authorities. Uh, uh, civic education is just starting now, and that would be an opportunity to find out if people who want to provide civic education uh, uh, have obstacles in their way. Uh, uh, maybe the Attorney General may want to comment on that. Uh, my own view would be that maybe the, it, 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 it's time to do another review of laws which people object to. Uh, rights are never absolute. Uh, there are always, they can, there are generally sometimes reasons why some restrictions might be placed, uh, but uh, restrictions must be justified by necessity. And I don't know enough about the current situation here and, and uh, whether some particular kinds of restrictions or rights uh, are necessary, uh, but uh, I hope that uh, the authorities will uh, uh, have, a, have a review uh, of, of the laws and to see if uh, the restrictions go beyond what is strictly necessary for the reason for which they are, uh, they are instituted. And uh, we certainly have, in our terms of reference, uh, the incorporation of human rights. Uh, we shall be spending a lot of time looking at the best ways in which effect can be given to human rights in the Constitution. And, uh, and uh, so it seems appropriate that uh, we don't have restrictions on rights as we embark on the process. So, gentlemen, from the PC News, uh, you received submissions from the various parties, and this includes the political parties. So how do you think would this be helpful to you? Sorry, I didn't get the first part of the question. You received submission already? Submission, yes. From various parties? Yes. Political, political parties? Yes. So how do you think it would be helpful to you? Well, I mean, we would want submissions from everyone, not just political parties. Uh, I think uh, when we, uh, uh, before we start our uh, consultations, we might uh, do a, a paper uh, setting out some of the uh, issues on which we want public to address us. Uh, these will flow from the principles, the guiding principles, uh, 
uh, in the Prime Minister's statement and other general universal values. Um, and, uh, uh, and we might, as I said earlier, set some questions to focus uh, attention of, of the people. And, and they can, you know, I hope that at least the political parties will give us written submissions. Uh, as will other large organizations. We will read them and then we will invite them to come and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. highlight the, the main points. And in that time, that, is, uh, that discussion, we might raise quite specific questions. I can't be you know, more particular than that. But we want to hear from everyone. And of course, political parties have a special interest because Constitution is partly about state politics, but we also want to hear from other groups how they think uh, state authority should be distributed, what should be the values, uh, but we would certainly welcome uh, submissions from political parties. The current laws or the changes that have been made. And one of the issues we've said about uh, meetings in relation to the uh, constitution making process, the different groups uh, wanting to meet, that's one of the main concerns that uh, those groups are raising, unions and other, other groups. Um, when this process kicks off, mm -hmm. do you strongly feel that they should be allowed to meet without a permit? Because that's been a contentious issue up to this point. Yes, well, I uh, don't want to comment too much on that without knowing exactly what the restrictions are and for what reasons. Uh, but, uh, but certainly, uh, uh, it is not unusual uh, in democratic countries to have some restrictions on, uh, on meetings uh, or processions for good reasons. Uh, you know, if you're walking down the street, well, you have to worry about the traffic, about people, hawkers maybe, or, you know, street is something, uh, is a facility. And, um, and, and so at least you should give notice so that, that people can be warned, you know, this road may be closed because there's a procession going. And, uh, and so there are, you know, good reasons sometimes for restrictions on these things. Uh, and the question is, as I was hinting earlier, is whether the restrictions go beyond what is strictly necessary. For example, in, in principle, people should be free to walk up and down streets and cross streets and so on. A procession often stops that happening. But if it is going to be a you know, half an hour procession or something, it's not so serious. You tell the public it's going to be shut for that period, so, so it's not a serious inconvenience to others. If this was happening all the time, without warning, it could become a nuisance to others. So it's a matter of a balance, th keeping things in perspective. Uh, and, um, um, and it could be that uh, if there are uh, people want to meet uh, for um, uh, discussion of their submission to, to us, they should be free to meet without too much bureaucratic um, uh, uh, procedures. Uh, and uh, so they could, you know, um, uh, maybe you, it's common in many countries that uh, you don't require a permit, but you require to give notification. 